Hi guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian McCollum and I'm here today at the Rock Island Auction Company taking a look at some of the guns that they're going to be selling in their upcoming May of 2017 premiere auction. Today we're taking a look at a pretty modern submachine gun actually. Uh, certainly any viewers in Italy will think that this is in no way a forgotten weapon because this is in fact still a standard issue weapon with the Italian military and a variety of Italian police forces. In fact, you'll see these things all over Italian cities if you walk around there. Uh, so this is a 9x19 standard cartridge submachine gun. Uh, weighs in at right about uh, 6.5 pounds, 3 kilograms, fires at about 550 rounds per minute. And it is the result of Beretta moving away from the designs of Tullio Marangoni. Now, Marangoni had designed, like, everything Beretta made, at least in pistols and submachine guns, for many decades. He was responsible for Beretta's whole line of automatic pistols uh, and also the submachine guns that they had from basically the end of World War I up into World War II. So that the Beretta 38 slash 42 slash 44 series, very well liked submachine guns in World War II, those were all Marangoni's design. After World War II, however, the buck passes and a, uh, a new designer takes over at Beretta, a guy named uh, Domenico Salza, and he starts working on this. And through the 1950s, he develops this, which would become the Beretta Model 12. Now, I do want to step back and point out, nomenclature-wise, uh, up until World War II, Beretta was naming these things after the year that they were manufactured, Model 38, Model 42, Model 44, etc. After the war, because of geopolitical economic circumstances, people kind of wanted to look forward to the future and not back. And so Beretta changed its nomenclature and started referring to, well, the first one, um, it took the Beretta Model 38-49, which is really that same gun they'd always had, just simplified a bit, um, and they renamed it the Model 1, because that sounds futuristic and new. And from then on, all of the new developments would be named with iterative numbers. So by the time 1958 rolled around and this gun was ready for market, it was the Beretta Model 12. Technologically, the Model 12 does a number of things, has a number of advantages over the old Marangoni pattern guns. Mainly, it's more controllable and it's a lot more compact. And the reason that was possible was because Domenico Salza used a, what we call it, sort of a telescoping bolt design. This is something that you would also see in uh, the Czech pattern 24 and 26 submachine guns and most famously in the Israeli Uzi submachine gun. So why don't I just take the bolt out of this one and show you what that looks like. So the Beretta is a very nicely finished gun, despite the fact that it is a basically a stamped tube receiver submachine gun, uh, but a, a good deal of fit and finish, a good deal of attention was paid to the fit and finish here. Now the classic question with a submachine gun is, what prevents it from firing if you drop it on the back end? That's the classic safety issue with these sorts of guns. And the answer on the Beretta is this trigger right here. That is a grip safety. And when it is not engaged, it actually locks the bolt if it's in the forward position. So I cannot pull the bolt back unless I depress the grip safety. That is what prevents uh, accidental discharges with the gun. Now we also have a manual safety here, which is full auto, semi-auto, and safe. And in the safe position, it simply locks uh, the grip safety so that you can't depress it. That's a simple and effective way of making the gun safe. Um, the original Beretta Model 12 actually had a push button safety. The 12S is the more modern upgraded version with this rotating lever safety. All of them, however, have a paddle magazine release right here at the back. Comes out. It's a very good magazine design. It is a double feed magazine. And then to extend the stock, we just push this button, which allows us to unfold it like so. And then this button here allows the butt plate to fold down. If there is a not particularly great feature of the Beretta 12, it is that stock. Uh, it is offset, so it's really only comfortable for right-handers. And it's a pretty thin and kind of uncomfortable stock to use. It does work, but it could be nicer. Now there are two stages to disassembly here. We have to take both ends off of the receiver. So I'm going to lift this spring-loaded tab up, which allows me to unscrew the rear cap. This will spring off under tension from the mainspring if you let it. We'll 
pull out the mainspring. Now I've pulled the bolt back and I can now take off the front receiver cap. We have another spring-loaded keeper, which is this, which I'm going to pull down. It's a little hard to do it where you can see it on camera. All right, there we go. Once the front cap is off, I can remove it. And then, depressing the grip safety and the trigger, I can pull the bolt and the barrel out the front of the gun. Once I have the bolt out, we can then tip the barrel out of it, wiggle it a little bit, and there we go, the two come apart. So when someone talks about a telescoping bolt in a submachine gun, this is typically what they are talking about. The thing is very long, and the actual breech face is at the back. What this does is it allows you to position a lot of the material forward, and that helps keep the gun controllable. What it means is the center of balance of the gun is going to be farther forward, and instead of uh, the mass all coming very far back in the receiver, a lot of it is gonna stay up front. So that reduces muzzle climb and just makes the guns nicer to shoot. You can see the barrel here. There's our full barrel length, and the bolt comes out to only, you know, just short of, just two inches short of the muzzle. So when you combine the forward mass of the bolt with a vertical forward pistol grip, um, the, this gun really is a remarkably controllable gun. It's generally well liked by the people who use it. Of course, all submachine guns really do require quite a bit of practice to become very proficient with, but the Beretta 12 is a, a pretty good one if you've got your choice. Uh, I believe there are some modern adaptations to allow it to use optical sights. Uh, in this standard original configuration, it's iron sights only, but even that at submachine gun ranges is really not that much of a problem. Uh, this is a really gorgeous, looks like virtually unused. Um, I'm sure it's been fired a little bit, but not a whole lot. This thing has been babied. Great example of a Beretta PM12, and these really are a quite good modern submachine gun. Uh, the downside, it, well, it is coming up for sale here, but the downside is it is a dealer sample. So if you have the license to purchase and possess a post sample machine gun, then take a look at the description text below. You'll find a link there to Rock Island's catalog page on this guy, and you can look at their pictures and description and everything else necessary to place a bid on it. If you are just a regular dude like me and you are only able to own transferable machine guns, well, you might be interested in taking a look at this one anyway, just to get a feel for what some of the dealer sample guns look like and sell for. Thanks for watching.